Lego games, they've had their fair share of character rosters. With thousands of characters spread across all Lego games, ranging from the Lego Marvel games to Lego DC games to Harry Potter to Dimensions to Star Wars. <laughs> we've had a, yeah, we've had a lot of characters. And we've looked at the good. You can check out the video up there. Wink. <laughs> now it's time to look at the, uh, the bad and the ugly. So out of the thousands of characters across all Lego games, it's now time to look at the top 25 worst characters in Lego games. Ah, well, it's that time again. Cue the music. So, hello, hello, hello there, guys. I am Rugged Eagle, and I do lots of LEGO content on my channel. So if you do like what you see, please feel free to subscribe and go to drop a like. I do, uh, I do highly recommend. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the rules and regulations. So for the rules, I could just simply fill up this entire list with the goons and henchmen from the Lego Batman games or the pointless civilians such as the characters from the Lego Harry Potter games like the Milkman. <laughs> I could simply do that, but I will not be doing this, mind you. I quite like the milkman. So the main factors I'm going to be compiling together when making my top 25 worst character list is how disappointing them characters are. Say you've played for an entire game and you finally unlock that character and they're a little bit disappointing, that could make them land a spot on this list. Another factor I will be taking in is how pointless them characters are. Say they have the same abilities as another character and they are meant to be unique, that could land them a spot on this list. And another point is, if the character is pretty pointless and has no special abilities and does absolutely nothing, they could again land a spot on this list. And I think you all know what character I'm talking about. <laughs> So yeah, I didn't want to fill up the list with loads of henchmen and goons and civilians. I wanted to keep it fun, and mainly we're looking at the disappointing characters. Anyway, let's crack on. So just to let you know, none of these are in any particular order. Coming in at number 25 is Squirrel Girl from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1. Yes. Squirrel Girl. So funnily enough, Squirrel Girl actually appears in every single Lego Marvel game. I don't know if it's a joke in the TT Games office, but all she does is throw squirrels. Like, <laughs> what is the point? However, I laughed at the character, and then I went to do some research and get a load of this. Squirrel Girl possesses superhuman strength, speed, agility, and reflexes, and she can lift around 25 tons. Like, what? So yeah, in the Lego game, she is not that powerful. All she can do in the Lego game is simply glide around, do acrobatic abilities, and she can charge herself up and have squirrels just appear everywhere. That is Squirrel Girl, wait for it, in a nutshell. <laughs> So yeah, I think I just have to put this one on the list because I don't get the concept of the character. I don't understand why this is a character in the Lego game and in the comics. I just don't understand. Next up at number 24 is from Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga and that is Chancellor Palpatine. He does nothing. Now alongside that, it's a bit of a dopey looking minifigure. However, this is the first time they actually kind of used a skirt piece on a character in a Lego game. It's kind of like the skirt piece, but it kind of isn't. It's like two legs but without the gap in the middle. So yeah, I think that's the only unique thing about him and his haircut. All you can do is walk around with him. You can't even attack anyone. To say he's meant to be the most powerful Sith Lord, <laughs> you ain't really powerful either. Now the whole reason why this character got added into the game, because the second level in Revenge of the Sith in the Complete Saga, you have to escort Chancellor Palpatine through the invisible hand. That is the whole reason why he's a character. Just so you look like you're escorting someone. <laughs> That's the whole reason. Moving on to number 23, we have Supergirl from Lego Batman 2. Oh my, she's annoying to unlock. So in hindsight, there is nothing wrong with Supergirl. She has all the same abilities as Superman, and she's a pretty decent character. But the only annoying thing is, you have to collect every single gold brick in Lego Batman 2 to unlock Supergirl. That's why she is so disappointing. She's the most difficult character to unlock out of every single Lego game. And she literally is the same as Superman, which you get on like the fifth level of the game. <laughs> I mean, technically, to unlock Supergirl, you have to get 100% of LEGO Batman 2. That's why it's just so annoying. I really do like Supergirl in LEGO Dimensions, though she were pretty rare to get. But Supergirl in LEGO Batman 2, no thank you. So at number 22 is actually a DLC character from LEGO Lord of the Rings, and that is the Mini Balrog. <laughs> yeah, not so big now, are you not, eh? You're gonna think to ask about starting with Gandalf the Grey. <laughs> 
So the mini Balrog, it's a really strange minifigure. It does look really cool, but it also looks really, really strange. The mini Balrog, again, is very similar to Chancellor Palpatine. It doesn't really do much in the game, and the most annoying thing is, you can't even fly with a character, and it has wings. I mean, that would be wicked if you could fly around Middle Earth, but they didn't design that map to be flown around. So next up at number 21 is the most disappointing character out of every single LEGO game and that comes from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1 and that is Absorbing Man. Right, for starters he can't even absorb anything and his name is Absorbing Man. All he is is a shirtless guy with a mace on a chain. I mean, he literally is just lying to everyone. In LEGO Marvel Avengers, he can actually absorb stuff, which is cool, but in LEGO Marvel 1, he can't even absorb anything. That's like me saying I'm absorbing, man. I can't absorb anything, so he's the most disappointing character. Seriously, they could have done a better job with him, but the rest of the characters in LEGO Marvel 1, they are fantastic. So number 20 should be a bit of a laugh, it's from LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens and that is Kathleen Kennedy. Oh boy, let's get into it. So I'm not going down the controversy of Kathleen Kennedy in this video, but they added J.J. Abrams in, which I'm completely fine with because he is the main director of The Force Awakens, and Kathleen Kennedy is just the exact same as J.J. Abrams, but I really wish they added John Williams instead because John Williams has done all the soundtracks for Star Wars, and he really deserves to make it into a LEGO Star Wars game. I really hope he is in the Skywalker saga. And Kathleen Kennedy, she's not got any special abilities and she's just there for no particular reason in my eyes. And the minifigure of Kathleen Kennedy isn't accurate to her in real life and JJ Abrams, they should have gave him a special ability where all that happens is lens flares just fill up your screen. <laughs> that would have been great but George Lucas, they should have just have added him in, he's the king. Swooping its way into number 19 is a character from LEGO Jurassic World, or actually multiple, because in LEGO Jurassic World, a lot of the characters are very, very similar. And I'm going to put on Mr. DNA, but a lot of the characters, like I said, all they do is just run around and attack stuff. The main highlight of Jurassic World is the dinosaurs, and guess what? They absolutely nailed them. Now, Jurassic World is one of my all-time favourite LEGO games, and Mr. DNA is 500,000 studs you unlock him by completing all four movies. He's got a really sweet-looking design, but he all he does is run around and attack stuff. I'm going to put Mr. DNA on here alongside all the other characters in Jurassic World. I do really like Jeff Goldblum's character, but <laughs> nevertheless, you get my point. Number 18, we have Jar Jar Binks from LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. You probably expected this one to make the list, because all Jar Jar Binks does is jump, well, double jump. So yeah, all he can do is just double jump to ridiculous heights. He is literally just used to help you progress through the story and to complete certain puzzles. That is the entire role of Jar Jar. He cannot even attack in the game neither. So Jar Jar Binks, carry on double jumping, my friend. We're moving on. So at number 17 is a character I don't really care for and I just think is a little bit boring and a little bit bland and that is the Living Mummy from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. Like I said, I'm not filling this list up with henchmen and goons, I'm just filling it up with characters you expected to get more from and they didn't live up to your expectations and the Living Mummy I don't really care for. He's got very similar abilities to any other character in LEGO Marvel 2 and his name's a bit boring, he's just a mummy. <laughs> So yeah, the Living Mummy is a prime example of one of them characters that you'll unlock, you'll play him for around 10 seconds, then you'll never be him again because they're just a little bit bland and there's other cooler characters who do the same thing and just are a lot better. And same goes to apply to number 16 on our list, which is the Living Totem from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. A little bit of a goofy looking character. So yeah, the Living Totem, again, it's one of them characters that you'll play and unlock and you'll be him for like 10 seconds and you'll never be him him again because there's nothing really interesting about the living totem. Every other big fig can do the exact same thing. All he has is a special charge up move where he charges, but a lot of the other big figs have this ability too. So the living totem is in the character roster if you want to use him. Making its way into number 15 on the list is a character from Lego Dimensions and that is Hermione Granger. Let me explain why. So in the game, there is actually nothing wrong with Hermione Granger. I just can't see the sense of this fun pack. Literally, Hermione is the exact same as Harry Potter. You might as well get the team pack where you get Harry Potter and Voldemort instead of paying lots of money just for Hermione Granger on her own. 
And when I was younger playing LEGO Dimensions, when you used to look at the characters and you used to get to watch the trailer for the characters you really wanted to buy, I always looked at Hermione and I thought she's the exact same as Harry Potter. Same with Tina Goldstein, she's the exact same as Newt's Commander. There's no reason to buy them packs if you've got the actual main packs. And it never made sense to me in that game, you might as well just buy the main pack and get yourself another fun pack, such as the Knight Rider fun pack, where you actually get a new world and a new character with different abilities. But yeah, there's nothing actually really wrong with the characters, I just can't make sense of why they actually got put into Dimensions, mainly just for extra money I suppose, but nevertheless, let's get on to number 14. At number 14 is Bon Voyage, is that how Mr Incredible says it, but Bon Voyage, uh, it's just a really disappointing character. Now I absolutely love Bon Voyage, I thought he was hilarious in the first Incredibles movie, and in Lego Incredibles he's the exact same as his henchman. How does that happen? So the only difference between him and his henchmen is that Bon Voyage has a different walk style, it's that weird thing that he does with his legs, which is fantastic, but all he does is throw bombs, which obviously makes sense, but I was just expecting a little bit more for this character, since he's one of the main villains in the Incredibles franchise. When you think of Incredibles, you think of the Incredible family, Bon Voyage, and all the other characters like Syndrome, but Bon Voyage didn't get as much highlight as I wanted him to. And you may be sat there thinking, what could they have added to Bon Voyage to make Make him more special to say he's one of the main bosses in the game in the free roam i just expected him to have like some really cool ability maybe where he pulls out a gigantic bomb something like that we're just looking for a little bit more now at number 13 is going to be a really controversial one please do not kill me but i'm going to put lord voldemort on the list you probably sat there thinking what <laughs> but let me explain so this character is very similar to supergirl in lego harry potter years one to four you've got to get every single single gold brick to unlock Lord Voldemort and you have to play through quite an annoying bonus level but Lord Voldemort he has the exact same spells as all the other villains in Lego Harry Potter so I don't understand what's so special about him in Harry Potter years 1 to 4. Now that ain't me saying I hate Voldemort because I think Voldemort is absolutely fantastic in Lego Dimensions. They really did nail him in that game. He's got a really cool ability how he can fly around. He can do the Avada Kedavra spell. I really do like Voldemort in that game. But in Lego Harry Potter years 1 to 4, you've already got the variations of Voldemort. So you might as well use them. Unless you're really going for 100%, then obviously Voldemort's great to get. But nevertheless, he's a really big grind to get. Swooping its way into number 12 on the list is another character from Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, and that is Anakin Skywalker, Boy. So otherwise known as young Anakin Skywalker, he basically is the same as Chancellor Palpatine, he cannot do much in the game, all he can do is walk around and he cannot attack, however, he can enter small places, he's mainly just using the story to do puzzles. So yeah, the moral of the story is when you complete the complete saga, I can't really see anyone playing as young Anakin Skywalker. I guess you're not the chosen one. So alongside young Anakin Skywalker, at number 11 is young Rey from Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's just a little bit pointless. So yeah, same as Anakin Skywalker Young, Young Rey has nothing special about her. All she can do is enter small places. You might as well just use an Ewok. Anyway, just before we get into the final 10 on the list, if you have gone to enjoy this video, please feel free to subscribe and go to drop a like only if you do go to enjoy. Though anyway, let's get into the final 10. So, dropping its way into number 10 is another character from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1, and that is Aldrich Killian. He's the main villain in Iron Man 3, and he's a bit boring. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't mean that in a harsh way. Aldrich Killian for me is just the average stereotypical villain for me. There's nothing really special to him. Yes, he shoots fireballs and breathes fire out of his mouth and he has a different animation. And you're probably sat there thinking, why didn't you choose someone else with the same abilities? I just think the character's not that special. He's just a guy in a suit who shoots fire. So coming in at number 9 is Damage Control, again from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1. And I actually asked people in my Discord server to give me their top 5 worst characters in LEGO games, and Damage Control cropped up quite a bit. So that's why he has to make the list. He's just a damage control worker. I know he technically counts as a civilian or worker, but the Discord voted him in, so hey, he's making it in. Also, you can join the Discord, link in the description. 
So making its way into number 8 on the list is Lord Business from the Lego Movie video game. And again, Lord Business is the main villain and once you get him, he's a little bit underwhelming. So the Lego Movie character roster is really fun and Lord Business, all he can do is shoot glue out of the craggle, which again is pretty funny. And he can get his big legs up by going to a station in the open world. And when you're walking around with his extra large legs, again, he's just a little bit boring. You can't really do all with his extra large legs. He's just a bit taller. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just Lord Business trying to get to six foot. I'm 5'11", I'm getting there, I'm getting there. So making its way into number seven is Nori from the Lego Hobbit game. And Nori is part of the main dwarfs in the Lego Hobbit. But the only thing about Nori, he's a little bit underwhelming compared to the other dwarfs. He just has an extra long stick and he's mainly used to do the puzzles. And another annoying thing about him, whenever you're fighting as the character, he keeps playing the same animation over and over again. Now, at number six on our list is literally the most pointless character. He can literally do nothing, and that is the servant droid from LEGO Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars, right? The character cannot even jump. The character cannot even attack. All he can do is run around. I guess he is a servant droid. Now making our way into the final five on our list out of the top 25, remember they're in no particular order. And at number five is TC-14. He's just a rip-off C-3PO. <laughs> He's only really used in one mission. You're never going to be TC-14 again, unless you prefer silver to gold, but eh, C-3PO better. And again, at number four, we have another rip-off. We have the enemy butler from LEGO Indiana Jones. It's literally a rip-off of Alfred. Look at him. <laughs> it is a rip-off. It's Alfred from Wish. However, though, hold the line. Lego Indiana Jones came out before Lego Batman 1, so is Alfred a ripoff of the enemy butler? So moving on to our final three. At number three, I have all the house boys and girls from Lego Harry Potter years one to four. With Gryffindor boy, Gryffindor girl, Ravenclaw girl. All of these, they just fill up the roster and they're pretty filler. And they don't even have as many spells as the other characters neither. And you could go to say that for all the characters in the Lego Harry Potter games. I absolutely love the Lego Harry Potter games, but it doesn't really matter what character you're being. As long as they have all the spells, it doesn't really matter. And if you want to use dark magic, just switch to someone who has all the dark magic spells. And coming in at number two, I'm actually putting an entire game on this spot, and that is Lego Movie 2. Lego Movie 2, it is an enjoyable Lego game, and I still really enjoy it. But all the characters, like I said, all that changes is the cosmetic appearance. None of them have any special abilities, because it's all down to the weapon bar on that game. So, it doesn't really matter who you be. And to finally wrap up at number one, they're in no particular order, is Robin from Lego Batman 1. How many times in your childhood did you kill Robin as Batman? Batman. I did it too many times. Everyone prefers Batman. Well, maybe not everyone, but <laughs> I'm only joking about that one. Anyway, that has pretty much been the top 25 worst characters in LEGO games. And just before you skedaddle skadoodle, if you want to check out all of my other LEGO content, there will be the entire playlist here. You can see it. Just click on that and there's lots of other videos like this. You'll really enjoy them. And if you're new around here, feel free to subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell and join the Discord to get even more LEGO stuff from me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Go to drop a like and I'll see you all in a bit. Adios.